collective sun moon rising venus signs and cross watchers welcome to your eight card draw what do i need shadow read for this full moon in leo to new moon in pisces february 2023 i am your reader mark angela lyons mal for short they are just my initials professional witch professional intuitive president of drawing the circle production since 1998 i know can you believe it author of words of grace from a professional witch book I wrote. Uh, it's available on Kindle. There is a link in the description box. Can you believe it? You know what else that maybe you can or can't believe? I am on Patreon. Patreon.com slash drawing the circle. Can you believe it is the best career move I have made to date in this timeline of this lifetime? Very, very happy there. My members only subscription platform allowing me to do all sorts of creative things with my subscribers. We've got eight different levels of subscribers. Seekers, humans, heroes, angels, witches, immortals, mystics, gods, goddesses is the top tier. They get everything. Uh, but all of my subscribers every single morning get to chat with me if they like uh, with an enlisted YouTube live stream link, a daily check-in, talking about the day's astrological weather, the magical applications, the spiritual implications, always ending with a little prayer, a little blessing, a little something, something uh, to send us on our way. And it is my favorite way to start the day even though it rhymes uh, and uh, we're doing a lot of cool stuff over there all my subscribers also get uh, the part twos the extended readings to my part ones on YouTube uh, and we're doing a lot of exclusive content we're doing workshops there uh, zoom recording it and all of that so uh, what I'm trying to say is if you want the deeper dive more magic more miracles more mysticism more mal come patreon on patreon we're really having a field day over there and I think you dig it so go check the menu see what I'm serving up over there because I am the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angela Lions. You can just call me Mal. Most people do. My mom won't, and that's okay. <laughs> so uh, let's get down to business, shall we? I love these eight card draws. It's just one card from eight different decks, getting you clues, tips, and hints about really anything. I've done these for clients on specific subjects. We are using it uh, to look at an astrological timeline from uh, full to new, February 2022. Let's have a look, see, Duxie. -see. The full moon in Leo on Sunday, February 5th. Tomorrow at the time of this recording, uh, 1.29 p.m. Eastern, and I have to say that is a very much a success day, right? The day of the sun, Sunday, with Leo Moon ruled by the sun. I It's a white candle, clear quartz crystal kind of day. Anything you want to succeed, which is everything you want in your life, you want it to succeed, to be healthy, to charge it, that solar, hot, wonderful, lo lovely, golden energy, have at it. But then, when the moon rides at her peak, then ye hearts desire seek. Sure, that's why I do the five card draws, the waxing moons. Help you clarify that creative process. This is the releasing, the letting go, the transforming, the forgiving. I prefer the language of spiritual alchemy. Uh, the transformation of lead to gold by releasing the three elements in between the two on the periodic table. In other words, lead is heavier than gold, has three atoms, and this is the metaphoric archetypal process of spiritual alchemy, uh, is what these readings, the say card draw is for. Uh, so, you know, you cast for it then, and then we go through the two weeks to the new moon in Pisces. It is a new moon on Monday. Light your torch, wave it for Simon Le Bon and the boys uh, on February 20th, 206 a.m. And really talk about a seed of your heart's desire of your wildest dreams. A Monday, a day of the moon with Pisces, mutable water, very, very powerful stuff. Uh, in between those two uh, days, the, the full moon and the new moon, on the 11th, uh, this might be of interest to you, Mercury goes into Aquarius. Now it goes into each sign for about a month, depending on retrogrades and whatnot, so just be aware of that. The 11th might be uh, a good day, which is really not that <laughs> far away from where we are at the time of this recording. Uh, on the 18th, the sun leaves Aquarius, goes into Pisces, does that once a month to all the signs. Uh, but on the 20th, uh, uh, the same day as the new moon on Monday, we'll have that song in my head until then and probably beyond, uh, uh, Venus goes in 
to Aries. Just if you have any planets uh, squaring that, conjuncting it, you know, it is your, your, uh, got something in Aries, you might want to check it out. So, it's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs. Check the titles of the other signs if you see repetitive themes there. Uh, and cross watchers, you are important to this. That's why cross watchers are welcome. You'll get some insight, some compassion, maybe even some empathy for the Aquarian you're cross watching for. But if you apply this to yourself, your own energy field, you will be alchemizing something and helping the Aquarians across the board, not just the one you're cross watching for. Uh, shift to a more golden timeline, right? For your well being, for the well being. Well, the more I go into quantum physics and the multiverse, you know, theories and all of that stuff. Please don't make me do the math, but I feel it, I get it. Then we can all shift this entire world uh, to a more golden, more peaceful, more healthy, more truth-based unity kind of vibe, if you're digging me. All right, so both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. I will do the best that I can to bring through the guidance, the grace, the love, the wisdom, the power, the clues, the tips, and the hints from the divine so that we can all move to a better world. That's so Aquarian. Oh my God. It's like a song should be written about it. Please take a nice deep breath. Let's keep our sense of humor about this. Because from explanation to divination, the shift happens in the still point. Still point. Thank you. Using the Caroline Mace archetype cards. I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers guided to watching this video, receiving this reading. Please, beloved ones, what is the dominant archetype hovering over the head in the eighth chakra of the Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers determining the soul power being alchemized from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to healthy, sending down the codes to all the other chakras in their energy field, shifting what they attract and what they repel, so they have the choice to no longer delay what uh, cannot be prevented. This uh, waning moon, right? Clearing the path uh, to uh, plant a new heart's desire. This full to new, almost no cigar, uh, February 2023. And we've got the pioneer archetype. Who else had the pioneer? Sagittarius had the pioneer archetype. You're glad I take that long to shuffle, trust me, because then I know uh, viscerally as a Virgo that I did my job. I shuffled those cards right when we get repeats. It is a creative family archetype, and of course, if you are have Sagittarius, anything or dealing with the Sagittarius, I would suggest check out the read. Um, the shadow attribute, the light attribute written on here is the lead, the gold. We're all somewhere in here, but you can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime, and I mean, like, a, a reason could be for an afternoon. You're like, come visit, you do the thing, and it takes off again. Uh, oh, because of the, <laughs> the coloring on this card and this lighting, I need this to kind of see it. It's beige on beige. Ugh. The shadow attribute. Compulsive need to keep moving on. Okay, we've all done it, right? Compulsive need to keep moving on. you got to think, what's a, 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 a pioneer in terms of creativity, right? It's tricky, right? Oh, I found it what else you got, right? Uh, and the light attribute, the gold you're shooting for, passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. Now look, creatively, that's not just in your own life. Like, there's a difference between exploring and pioneering. Um, you can explore, I love this one, you can explore Japanese cuisine, but you did not pioneer it, most likely, <laughs> right? I mean, you take it in weird directions, I suppose, you know, you do you, uh, uh, but going where, where no man has gone before. Now, it's so funny, if you look at the symbol for your ruling planet, Uranus, believe me, I have Uranus jokes out the ass. Uh, 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 it looks like the Starship Enterprise. It does. It took an astrologer to point that out to me. I couldn't believe it. I never saw it before, right? So there. <laughs> Blessed be. Roll with that, right? You're ruled by Uranus, right? So to go where no one's gone before, to take, to push, not just push the envelope, 
but it's very rebellious in that sense of Aquarius, right? So the light attribute, uh, passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. It's very Aquarian, you got to admit. And it, it was very Sagittarian too, like you know, of the two signs that I can think of, uh, those two kind of have that vibe. All right. Next four chakras down we're doing with Daughters of the Moon Tarot, the feminine energy, the goddess energy. Your creative uh, intuition is in your heart, third, third eye and crown. It's like a laboratory, right? So uh, to get you clues, tips and hints, because this is really where you make the choice to either do the work or not, do what's required or not. Uh, so that's the chakra, but let's see what hits the table. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Still point. <laughs> I call upon my goddesses of air, the sign of Aquarius, powers of the east. Please, beloved goddesses of wisdom and fixed air, like the stratosphere, seeing it from the higher atmosphere. One card in clarity, please, for my beloved Aquarian collector. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers guided to call to watch this video and are receiving this reading. What do they need to be aware of behind their eyes? Heart, third, third eye crown, the internal, the internal, to help them do this shadow work. Alchemizing, the pioneer from shadow to light, lead to gold, paint to peace, toxic to healthy, this full to new. Okay, four of cups. We're looking at a heart chakra thing here. This is about emotional release. Now, this is the four of cups. We're used to seeing cups spilled, but one still standing in the five. Fiona Morgan does this a little bit differently. Fours are numbers of rest. So, what's going on behind the scenes here might be on an emotional scale from meh to bottom of the ocean. I'm not getting bottom of the ocean there, but I will say it is this very state that has caused people to want to pioneer to go where they have not gone before. So, you know, you know, it, look, there's a difference between traumatic emotional stuff going on. It's a four, not a five. Like, five goes there. I don't know that that's where we are. We got more cards to hit the table. But certainly can be that waxing and waning of emotion. Mood, a little mood swinging, but also in a place of rest. And, and because fours are stable, usually, to allow that emotional ebb and flow to be in balance rather than imbalance, right? Uh, because it is very much that emotional thing, that yearning, that calling maybe, that calls you forward, yes, into the storm of the five, but gets you to the six of cups. The harmony of it. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. I like that. I like that. I know we're asking air signs to feel things, but you know, you do you. Uh, let's keep our sense of humor. Let's keep it light for a shadow read. But we're definitely looking at emotional processing work some way, shape, or form. So let's get lower three chakras, the physical, the masculine energy, uh, your survival intuition, how you navigate through the physical world, relationships in the world, including your relationship to yourself. Like this could be stepping out, seeing yourself horizontally, or you from the inside looking out at different people, places, and things. Please take a nice deep breath. Mm. Still point. As I call upon... <laughs> feel that. As I call upon my gods of air, the sign of Aquarius, powers of the east, please, one card in clarity, beloved gods of fixed air. Lower three chakra dynamic. What is the Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, it's a cross watcher, it's going all over the place. Uh, need to be aware of lower three chakras outside in, inside out relationships in the world to help them alchemize. The pioneer in the eighth chakra from shadow to light, lead to gold, paint to peace, toxic to healthy. Uh, with that four of cups, the key word there is sorrow, but you know, that may not necessarily be defined as that, but definitely in a place of perhaps a little emotional stagnation. And still, even if three cups are spilled, there is still one full uh, behind in the subconscious, in the unconscious, moving them forward. Well, they need to be aware of inside out, outside in, this full to new. Ooh, the high priestess. 
Now look at her decor. Let's see, she's got a white column on this side and a dark column on this side. I guess I've been influenced by Persephone as a queen of the underworld, wife of Hades, technically her uncle, you know. A long time ago. Uh, problematic. But, you know, gets to spend half the year above. She's got lots of secrets. She's got the secrets of death and rebirth. Prosperity itself. Prosopina in Italian. Uh, Persephone. Uh, but the high priest is, de is definitely about paying attention to your lower three chakra intuition and not saying a word about it. <laughs> right? You're going to pioneer. I would keep your yap shut, personally, uh, because, you know, it doesn't mean you can't have confession and, and emotional release, but do it in sacred context. Find yourself a high priest or a high priestess, right? To confess to. Uh, in that sense, certainly, your own lower three chakras will tell you moment by moment what's going on around you. Root chakra will tell you groups, tribes, right? <laughs> Physical places, like when you, your root chakra doesn't connect, it's like, get the fuck out of here. I don't know why. Leave, right? Like My mom calls that rat magic. I always know when to jump ship. I do. It's a root chakra thing. I'm an earth sign. I'm a Virgo. Second chakra, if second chakra goes Bleh, no, usually with another person or thing, and solar plexus, if it goes Bleh, your honor code is being challenged, your ethics, your boundaries are being challenged. So pay attention to that, right? And yeah, if the heart's going, I don't want Wanna, right? I get it. Uh, in a current situation, because you want to go above and beyond. It's very super heroic, I'm gonna say. Not just a hero's journey, but pioneers. It's a different gig. All right. Oh, in terms of your creativity, we're going to get a MatCon healing mantra to help you bring that into alignment because you're fixed air. Aquarians, I think, have... Aquarians, Libras, and Gemini, certainly the air signs, uh, have a bit more of an advantage with mantras because they are mental, mind-based element of air. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. Mm hmm. I call upon the Ascended Masters of Creativity because of this creative archetype on the pioneer on the table here for the Aquarian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers. And I have a feeling that they have secrets <coughs> that they are holding back uh, in this situation and not so sure whether or not to speak them. And for some people, it can be about some shady shit that has gone on that they know about. And which is probably making them want to just get up and out of there. So please, I call upon the Ascended Masters. What is the perfect healing mantra? Make it clear, make it specific, make it incisive, truly helpful, truly healing. For the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Suns, and Cross Watchers, so they can alchemize the pioneer from shadow to light, lid to gold, paint to peace, toxic to healthy. Four cups on the inner, high priestess on the outer, this full to new. Encountering conflict, I don't choose sides, I take a stand, work. Uh, I use this mantra on the daily, it feels like, and it is truly helpful because, obviously, there is a conflict here, right, the Four of Cups, even at meth, it's like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, right, but shh, I got dirt on all of you. For some of you, that may not be all of you, but it's like, oh, see, I've always said, you know, I don't need to lie, what I could do with the truth alone, plus your guides will rat you out to me like that if needed. So let me read this from the bookie book, Encountering Conflict, I don't choose sides, I take a stand, it's about taking a stand for love, and often that means you know, choosing as you go uh, what you say and what you don't. Uh, taking space for yourself, but listening uh, and holding <coughs> space. Where are you? Here we go. Encountering conflict. I don't choose sides. I take a stand. It's very Aquarian, by the way. When conflict is encountered, two opposing viewpoints wrestle for a dominant position. Familiar with it? Yeah, it's called the human race since jump. Each hopes to achieve success 
by changing the other's viewpoint. If encountering conflict from a conscious standpoint, you may realize one of the greatest gifts you can offer is allowing others to be heard. Now let's stick a pin in this. Professionally, well, I was a minister for a very, very long time, I know. <laughs> Just take a deep breath, it's the truth. I defrocked myself, thank you very much. But I'm still held to those vows, and one of those vows is the vows of confidentiality. I am a really, really good confessor. Because I've heard a lot, I've said, and people think they're going to freak me out. I'm like, that's all you got? No, blessed be, you know? Uh, so I hear a lot of confessions, uh, a lot, and a lot of the times it's just holding space and being present and not thinking about what you're going to say, right? Just being there now and breathing, right? You may not agree with their argument, but you are embracing their needs simply by choosing to listen. Now, simple need not in play easy this is something you can practice. Uh, when you listen instead of lash out, you are taking a stand for love. This is making the decision to anchor the higher frequencies of light through the demonstration of your ethics, morals, and values instead of matching the unconsciousness of others with equal amounts of aggression. It's the age of Aquarius, you know, all that shit in that song. Harmony and understanding. Well, here it is. Here's your opportunity to pioneer that. How about pioneering that, right? Like in the workaday world or wherever this is playing out. This mantra is ideal for settling arguments, unraveling passive aggressive behavior. Which I made something in the house rattle. I laughed so hard on that one. Oh yeah, no, go ahead. Tell me your manifesto. Can't wait to hear it. No, I was raised with that. You don't do that. Uh, and releasing the tendency to blame. Wow. Okay, so this is this is listening. This is listening to your lower three chakras, number one. B, I love doing that, one and B, uh, to know that, the, that just listen. You don't have to agree. I have said to so many people since working these mantras, this one in particular, in my life, in my work, in my family, whatever, it's like, just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I don't love you. I love you. I just don't agree, and that's okay. And for some of them, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. It's called agreeing to disagree, and I love you. And they're like, mm, what? <laughs> right? Uh, and, and sometimes that's what you got to do. But if you're feeling sort of meh, then you sort of meh. We're only five cards down of eight. So let's keep going. Let's see what the Whispers of Love have to say, the higher selves. Uh, from Angela Hartfield, we're also using her Whispers of Lord Ganesh to help remove the three atoms, the symbolic, metaphoric obstacles uh, between lead and gold for the pioneer. Uh, let's see what the higher selves of all involved, because chances are there are other people in this one if you're encountering conflict. Please, take a nice deep breath. Have another cherry. Still point. Share, share alike. As I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, what is the whisper of love, the piece of information, inspiration, insight needed for the Aquarius Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video, receiving this reading, so they can alchemize the pioneer from shadow to light, light to gold, pain to peace. Four cups on the inner. High Priestess on the outer, encountering conflicts. They don't have to choose sides. They can take a stand for love. So help them do that. The guidance, grace, love, wisdom, and power. What do they need to know? This uh, full to new. Treasure your loved ones. Treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply. Okay, now look. Sometimes you don't do that in the situation where these people are involved. I'm just seeing like work versus home for a moment. Right? You're like, okay, I'm going to be as loving as I can in this, and I am going to do this because I treasure the people in my life. I treasure the experiences in my life. I'm going to love deeply because this four, yeah, is probably going to have to go through the five, the storm in Daughters of the Moon Tarot, to get to the six, which is definitely a card of compassion and emotional balance, and then onward through the cups, to the ten of cups, the ecstasy card, right? On the inner, but on the outside, the outer here, I just feel like whatever it is that you're encountering, that you're going to find yourself more and more and more pioneering a way of being in the world 
that is heart-centered and honorable without sacrificing your integrity. Yeah, being true to yourself and treasuring. You know, because loved ones, yes, the people, it is important we love others deeply. But what if that love is for what you do for a living? I'm just seeing this for a lot of people in a work context. It's a general read. It could be, but I doubt that's for everybody. It could easily be in any sort of relationship as well, right? Where it's just like, I don't want to talk about this anymore, but I love you, so I'm just going to listen and give you love that way and treasure you sometimes from a distance. Maybe that's pioneering. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And that's why we're using the newest deck in the Drawing the Circle Productions uh, 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 divinatory kick line here. Uh, the Archangel Fire Oracle by Alexandra Wenman from Findhorn Press. Uh, eventually, I will probably stop saying this every time I mention it because Findhorn, I've never been there in this life. But check out Findhorn in Scotland. Just, it's a Google search. It's worth it. Write it down on a post-it. You know, I invented post-its. Because um, uh, everybody's got an archangel assigned to them at certain phases, places, stages in our lives. So let's see who's assigned to your case. Please take a nice deep breath. I'm trying to ground this, man. Still point. As I call to the pantheons of archangels, the arcs of angels, uh, collective consciousness, but broken into different sectors, different things, different vibes, different paradigms. One card in clarity, please, beloved celestial archangels. For the Aquarian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video, receiving this reading, who is the Archangel in charge of their case? Helping them alchemize the shadow to light, the lead to gold, the pain to peace, the toxic to healthy, their guidance, their grace, their love, their wisdom, their power, their oracle message, alchemizing the pioneer from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to healthy, four cups on the inner encounter in conflict. On the outer, Ooh, I put those in the wrong order, but that was the right order, encountering conflict and being the high priestess about it on the outside, but maybe also having a confessor in there, uh, sacred secret listening, right? They don't have to choose sides, taking a stand and treasuring their loved ones as they go, keeping that heart open. Maybe nobody knows about it, but that's what they're doing or would be helpful. What do they need? Who is here to help this full to new? Oh, Jophiel, G-O-P-H-I-E-L, lots of butterflies. Uh, psyche uh, uh, is the uh, Greek word for butterfly and the soul, hence the stages of transformation, of awakening that we go through from egg to caterpillar to pupa to butterfly. Card number 15, a very, very joyful card. I got the wrong bookie book. And what I love about this book this deck is they do not put the keywords on the card. You gotta look it up. And that sounds uh, like Finhorn <laughs> to me. They, oh, the stuff they do with this, the, the nature spirits there. It's, it's something I would love to go in this life. And now I have contacts over in Scotland that I could do that. International Professional Witch of Mystery. Joy is your keyword. Joy. Oh, happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Now that's a leap from that Four of Cups. But let's see. Card number 15, Jophiel, J O P H I E L, joy. The Archangel of Joy, Wisdom, and Beauty, Jophiel, governs the yellow ray of illumination. Like the, oh, the Irish lass in this card, she gives us the ability to add more gladness to our lives. She also helps us to learn and teach at the highest level, enabling us to find the answers to important questions. Oh, gosh, I'm got it. Oh, I like it too. See the beauty in all things and think more positively. Well, there you go, Aquarius. There is your element of air. Jophiel sets us on the right path to achieving <laughs> spiritual enlightenment. She can help us to get organized and clear out our physical and emotional clutter, which can be a real help when you're tackling spring cleaning or trying to get to the bottom of any old stuck emotions. All right, well, we are talking about Aquarius here and they got four cups and I did say stuck motions the message be joyful
Be joyful. Let go of your heavy physical and emotional burdens. Release your baggage. Well, this is a shadow read. This is exactly what we're talking about. Uh, allow new clarity and happiness to pour into your life. Then you can rise up out of the gloom and fly higher. And I get that. We do that when we love those people, places, and things that we treasure. When we love deeply, joy is our natural state. Eckhart Tolle, uh, the ancient sutras, right? Our natural state is one of unity and joy. There is no separation. There is no loss. There is no lack, right? Or radiant selves. But we got all sorts of conditioning passed down through the generations since Og hit Grog with the first, you know, club, you know. So we've all, uh, we've all, we're all doing this shadow work, and that's why we clear this for ourselves individually. We're helping everybody do it and shifting this world to a better place from the inside out, right? Doesn't mean that action is not required. Of course there is. Uh, but certainly how you are vibrationally arguing with somebody in this world as things are right now, well, if you want to pioneer something maybe politically, this could be a way of doing it. Not my gig, thanks. I'm a witch. <laughs> uh, let's remove some obstacles with the whispers of Lord Ganesh, really. How oh, I'm able to bring such levity to such intensity of a shadow raid on YouTube, I think, is, I don't know. I don't need an award, but the recognition, the realization is kind of fun. Uh, those three atoms in between lead and gold, Ganesh is the Hindu elephant headed god of success, prosperity, and remover of obstacles and I love him please take a nice deep breath I think you would too because he's an elephant still point hmm feels so good as I call to beloved Lord Ganesh there you are Beloved God of success, prosperity, and remover of obstacles, please, beloved one, what is your guidance, your grace, your love, your wisdom, your power, your oracle message to help the Aquarian collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers drawn to, called to watching this video and receiving this reading, help them, what do you got for them to help them alchemize the pioneer and the eighth, four cups on the inner. High Priestess on the Outer, encountering conflict, not choosing sides, taking a stand, and sometimes that means defending their boundaries while they treasure their uh, loved ones in joy, for joy, calling upon that angel. They don't come unless you ask, Joe Fail, bring me the joy. Help me enjoy. Help me find joy. Lay down my burdens. Move through this. Alchemize from shadow to light, lead to gold, paint to peace. What do you got for them? beloved Lord Ganesh this full to new spiritual quest. You're not the only one who got this one. Uh, I don't know who got it here. It feels like a couple of readings ago. Uh, but the spiritual quest is it. And you do not have to sacrifice work in the world to do that. In other words, you don't go like you know, shave your head, change your name, move to another country, right? You can, you know, you can eat, pray, love as much as you like. Uh, uh, you go travel. Make it literal if that's your calling. Um, but this is about being in uh, being in the world, but not of it. Oh yeah, I just came up with that. No, <laughs> let me read you from the bookie book. Spiritual quest, you know, he brought his parasol because he knows, you know. Dry skin's not fun, even with divine beings, right? Sun damage. <coughs> card number, what is that, 40? Yeah, card number 40. A uh, spiritual quest, this I need this for with a micro font. Please breathe. Card number 40, spiritual quest. You are called to realize your full potential and to choose to become a force for good in this world. This is the superhero card. Whether or not you are aware of it, you are embarking on a great spiritual quest, pioneer. Big shock. Your soul is leading you to a myriad of discoveries about who you truly are and what you came here to achieve in this lifetime. And I don't care how old you are, there's always a higher truth with that stuff. 
climb the mountain, right? One step at a time. Each of us has a unique journey that is tailored especially for us and designed for us to reach our highest potential. Uh, during this quest, you will gain significant insight into your purpose here on Earth. For, you know, and you only get that after you have a certain amount of experience and wisdom under your belt, making all sorts of mistakes, right? It's how we go. It's how we learn. For many of us, this journey will have been preceded by a period of upheaval, confusion, and conflict, which has birthed a desire for greater clarity and concrete answers about the meaning and purpose of your life. Yeah, it's called existential ennui. So shade that lid and we'll all bid adieu to your ennui. Let's have a kiki. From this spiritual journey you are undertaking, taking, you will gain wisdom, enlightenment, and an enhance. You have to use, you know, the Scissor Sisters when they come by. I'm so sorry, only like 2% of people watching this will know what I just did. As you travel on this path, make a point to commit to the quest. Some of you are peeing yourselves laughing. And uh, not be tempted by distractions that may cause you to veer off track, like what other people are doing, like the, the conflicts you will encounter, right? Ganesha urges you to focus your energy less on having and more on simply being. Your spiritual growth can be enhanced by the regular practice of meditation and self-reflection at this time. High Priestess, High Priestess, High Priestess, location, location, <laughs> location. Wow. So that's how you remove the obstacles. You take the journey as a pioneer and you do this in ways that have never been done before. Well, you're the freaks of the Zodiac, you're the rebels, you're the Aquarians, you're ruled by Uranus. It speaks for itself. Hi! Uh, 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 so have at it. It's a very powerful read. And I think that joy on the table really lightens this up. Because like I said, you're not in the Five of Cups. Maybe bored as hell or just like over it. <laughs> Meh. Hashtag M E H. All right, last card down. The gold hidden within the lead if you do the alchemy. The hidden blessing, the blessed be by Lucy Cavendish. <laughs> there, now I've done Scottish and Irish. I might hit the Queen's British before we're done uh, because this is the Celtic uh, blessing cards to enrich and empower by Lucy Cavendish, uh, but I've consecrated the deck, empowered it, whatever, tuned it to the pantheons of all pantheons, all traditions, lineages, and cultures. This is YouTube, and I'm here to serve the world, apparently. Please take a nice deep breath. It's like talking to the UN. Still point. I call upon the pantheons of all pantheons. Please, a delegation from all traditions, lineages, and cultures, one card in clarity, please. For the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers, watching this video and receiving this reading. What is the gold hidden within the lead that they can uncover? The hidden blessing, meaning the blessing is already here and now underway. For the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Cross Watchers, watching this video, receiving this reading so that they can get a little light at the end of the tunnel. Alchemizing the pioneer from shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, toxic to healthy. Four cups on the inner, high priestess on the outer, encountering conflict, treasuring their loved ones with Joe Fields' joy on a spiritual quest to remove them obstacles during the shadow work, all that's needed. It's the gold within the lead, the hidden blessing, last card down, this full to new for the Aquarians, a blessing for peace of mind. This has come up three times in this series. Who just got it? Oh, uh, uh, Capricorn just got it. Someone else got it. I don't know where it is. It's there somewhere. Somebody else got it. Eh, whatever. Uh, blessing for peace of mind. And by the way, she is the cover girl. She put the bass in her walk head to toe. She lets her whole body talk. Reclining with a raven. I'm in. Uh, card number three. 30, is that a 52? No, it's a 32. I'm giving you your curly Q numbers. You kids in your fancy fonts. Uh, card number, whoop, just skipped you. 31. Card number 32. Blessing uh, for peace of mind. Now, before we even do this, I do the blessings for real. As much as I like to yuck it up because it is a shadow read. Uh, the divine does this through me anyway. So uh, sit back, 
breathe this in, and uh, at the end of this, the reading's over, but I like to chat a little bit at the end and release y'all, and usually any residual goofy comes out, if we're lucky. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Still point. Pantheons, please transmit. Card number 32, a blessing for peace of mind. A blessing to help soothe the mind at storm with itself and bring about calm and peace once again. When you awaken and trouble is sitting there with you, right on your shoulder, speaking to you of all you must fret and be fearful of, let this blessing come to you and be felt truly in your mind where the turbulence has reigned for too long now. Let the quiet of the natural day steal in. Let the soft call of your spirit whisper to you that you have worried too long and that it is time to set down your burden. And let the angels and spirit be beings deal what cannot be unraveled by the labyrinth of thought. Encountering conflict, joy, spiritual quest, this is all a through line. Let it go and let it be, for it is not for you to do what others will not, cannot, or remain ignorant of. It is for you now to care for you. Let peace, that quiet blessing, softly take up residence in your mind and speak calming words to you, soothing every objection your mind at war with the world creates. Let the nurturing of the mother, the planet herself, who loves you so and cares so much for you, take hold and take root within your mind. Let yourself do only what you must and what must be done this day and be very kind and very gentle all this time with yourself. Speak softly. Hi, Priestess. Speak softly. Remove yourself from anything that provokes the disquiet unnecessarily and calm yourself through the taking of moments to soothe yourself. Let your mind release one by one those terrible thoughts that have tortured you. Let your body relax and move and in the movement free yourself from the stress and tension. Let the idea of being at war with the world, isolated and alone, go. Let it go and for a time seek out only those who show kindness and sensitivity to you. Be patient with yourself, and in this patience, let the blessing of deep peace be yours. Blessed be for the well-being of all, and with harm to none. As we will it, so let it be done. So let it be. So it is. Oh, gentle there for you. That's a switch. Did you like it? Hit the thumbs up. Hope the other Aquarians find this. It's what thumbs up does, apparently. So do it. You know better. Better than me. Probably you're an Aquarian. <laughs> if you want more of me here on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe. That helps other people find my work too. Because you know what? I have learned the hard way, the easy way, <coughs> round and about that YouTube is just a gateway drug to Patreon, at least for me. I love it so much. Come Patreon on Patreon. I'm serious. If you're looking for some deeper dive, some out of the box kind of stuff going on, click the link. Just look at the menu. That's all I'm saying. Look at the menu. If you're on a spiritual quest, honey, I've been a witch for many Aquarians, and it's nice to have a Virgo to turn to. And if you want to book me for a private reading, which is another way, if you so choose, there's a link in the description box. YouTube video, Booking a Reading with Mal, explains everything you ever wanted to know about booking a reading with Mal, but we're afraid to ask. And I'm glad to help. Why? Because I've always had Aquarian friends in my life. I love you all, you freaks, all of you. I really do adore you. Do, 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 do. I love you. So reach out uh, if you need. And most importantly, again, what else can be said? I love you. 
Hang in there. Do the shadow work. I'm here. Heal. Hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.